Hello and welcome to this presentation with information about the Watford Academy and UTC due to the opening to Year 7 students from September 2021. My name is Paul Quinn. I'm currently the Acting Principal at the Watford UTC. Uh, I've been here for six years. I helped open up the Watford UTC for 14 to 19 year olds as a university technical college with the founding principal, Emma Loveland. And the plan is that I will become the founding principal of the Watford Academy and UTC from September when we open up our doors to year seven students. There is a shortage of secondary school places in the southwest Hertfordshire and in fact the Watford area. So we have capacity for 600 students in our building and we have the opportunity to open up our resources to students of year seven age from September. So this presentation is to give you some more information about what is planned. As you can see on the slide on the screen, that is our four bullet point vision for a Watford Academy student by the time they leave us. Those four bullet points can be summed up in one word in effect, which is resilience. We are trying to build up resilient young people that can face the challenges of the world and what the future is going to throw at them. One of our unique selling points is the fact that we're going to be big enough to cope, but small enough to care. We will be opening to 90 students in each year group starting from September. And even when we're at full capacity, the building will have no more than 600 students in it. We will always be a small secondary school. And we think it's important that families have a choice of secondary schools and offer when they leave primary school and want to look at secondary schools in year seven. We will get to know our students very quickly. We'll get to know the students very well and we'll be in place to support those students through their journey through secondary school. What we want our learners to be, you can see some bullet points there on the screen. One advantage of opening up as the Watford Academy from September is young people don't have to wait until they're 14 to join us. At present, we take students in year 10 at 14 and year 12 at 16, and we have a specialist curriculum for them. When we open up in September to year seven, it will be for 90 students. And as we said, it will be a broad and balanced curriculum. We'll give you some details of that a little bit later in the presentation. These are the skills and qualities we want to develop in our young people, what you can see at the bottom of your screen at the moment. And those keywords highlighted, we think, are the key skills and key, key qualities that we want our young people to have. It is about engaging with the life of the school and beyond, not just the lessons, but beyond that. Taking responsibility for their learning and for their behaviour and developing that independence in how they learn and how they improve themselves to the next stage about developing their confidence as young people uh, to, to get their way through the world and, and move on to be successful young adults in society, uh, and developing a pro-social approach, learning about the world, about the complexities of the world, their place in it, and how to contribute and give back. And of course, knowledge is vitally important. Knowledge will help develop their subject skills and it will help develop their opportunities in gaining those qualifications and those key pieces of paper that open up the doors to the next stages in their life. Another thing we'll be keen to develop is our pastoral care. As we said in the earlier slide, one of our unique learning point, uh, selling points is of course being small enough to cope, but big enough to care. We will have small year groups of 90 and within that we'll get to know our students very well, very quickly. One of the things we'd like to develop for our young people are their way of developing the character and a way of developing what's sometimes called cultural capital. So as well as having those important subject qualifications, it's how we develop them as well-rounded individuals ready for the next stage in the world. The aim would be that every year our students would take part in at least one thing in each of those categories that you can see on the screen at the minute. Sport, creativity, performing, volunteering membership, and the world of work. Some students, of course, will have interests and in, in talents in more than one of these things in these areas, but in order to develop that well-rounded capability, we want them to be able to participate in at least one thing from each of those areas every academic year. So in terms of sport and 
well-being and fitness and, and healthy lifestyle. Um, it's not just the traditional team sports and ball sports that are part of a PE programme, but looking at other activities that might get our young people engaged in an interest in something to, to keep them healthy uh, and to engage them both in mind and in body. Creativity is not just about the arts. It can be about developing programming and coding skills. It could be about media creation and um, developing films or developing websites, for example, as well as the traditional bits of creativity using arts and crafts in writing in literature, etc. Performing, again, is not just about being a good actor or being a musician or having a talent in those, those areas, but also public speaking being able to debate, being able to communicate clearly, maybe being able to stand up in front of your peers and deliver an assembly. So it's developing that oracy, that communication skill is also important. And as well as that with performing, it's also just important what happens behind the curtain, that in order for people to be able to perform and to put on a production, you do need, you do need the skills and ability behind the scenes as well to put these things on. Volunteering and membership is about giving something back to the community, whether it's the local Watford Academy community with something as simple as litter picking or um, recycling. It could be taking part in community groups. It could be being part of formal um, organisations outside of the Watford UTC, um, or it could be taking part in Duke of Edinburgh schemes. But it's important we want our young people to give something back to the community, whether the local community, the wider Watford community, or even worldwide community in some way. And finally, the world of work. It's taking advantage of the links that we currently have with employers and with organisations outside the Watford UTC and bringing that in to let our younger students from year seven access that. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about students going on work experience at 11 years old, but certainly having access to organisations, having access to expertise in the world of work uh, in order to find out about the work, wider world out there. Just to give you an example, following up on that world of work, these are some of the organisations that we currently work with at the Watford UTC, and the different ways they support us vary. Some offer direct employment after our students leave uh, at 18, some offer work experience and work placement programmes, some co-author assignments with our, um, with our staff in order to deliver assignments and vocational education to our young people. Some of them come in and deliver master classes. Very often they will host our young people, our students at their headquarters, at their venues, so they get a taste of what it's like to work in these organisations. And sometimes it's offering qualifications over and above traditional GCSEs, A-levels and BTECs, for example. So they all work and support us in very different ways. And our aim will be to continue that support to our younger students from year seven. So offering an excellent education. One of the things that we do offer at the moment, one of our specialisms is computer science, digital entrepreneurship, not just in the qualifications we offer, but on the additional industry qualifications that our young people can take uh, from 14 years old. So that expertise we have, that excellent equipment we have. We have computer rooms um, all over the building. We have laptop trolleys in many of the classrooms. We have access to iPads and tablets, robotics, including the now robot you can see on the screen, as well as traditional robot arenas. And we are keen that that expertise and that equipment becomes available to our young people from year seven. So not just waiting to we become a UTC 14, but available from day one for the students to access to develop that area of expertise, because digital skills is going to be a huge part of any future employment and economy. We know that. So an answer to the question of what might a year seven curriculum look like? What might your timetable look like? What is your typical day going to be? Uh, something similar to what we have planned on screen. Uh, the idea, the plan will be year seven students or key stage three students will have a nine o'clock to 3.20 day at uh, the Watford Academy. We'll have timetabled approximately 30 sessions per week, so six sessions per day. And as well as those timetabled subject sessions, we'd, offer, we'd also offer a study session each day. So this would be with a member of staff, usually in a, in a computer room, and it would help students with any homework assignments or any work that's been set in the subject. So they've got some supported um, in place, some support in place to help them with their work, help them get organised, 
and help develop build those independent study skills. As you can see, we'll have a broad and balanced curriculum. So it will offer a whole range of subjects, including arts, including drama, including expressive arts and PE and sports. Um, and in addition to geography and history and languages. So lots of the broad and balanced curriculum and conventional subjects you expect to find in every secondary school. What would make us a little bit different is we'd have a little bit more computing on offer there, taking advantage of the staffing and excellent facilities we have. Our smart product design, which takes advantage of our 3D printing and laser printing facilities we have and our electronics that we have currently available. And business and event management, which is tapping into one of our other specialisms, developing those entrepreneur skills, as well as a whole range of other subjects, as we say. What will always be key will be those core subjects of English, Math and Science that go all the way through, um, right through to, to the end of Year 11, as we currently have. So that would be our outline plan of our timetable for Year 7 onwards. So some key points, trying to address some questions that you may have about uh, the Watford UTC. One of my overriding jobs as principal is making sure all the students feel safe and secure when they're here with us at the moment, and that doesn't change from year seven. It's an overriding, ongoing principle, making sure our students are safe and secure, and that's my number one job every day, and that would change when year seven come aboard. Our behaviour policy is based on pointing our students towards the behaviour and conduct we want them to have, it's not always necessarily a big list of rules of no's and do's and don'ts, but how we want them to be. We will, of course, have a behaviour system. We will have conduct and debits and credits um, for our students. That will continue in for our year seven. One thing I do want to talk about is the clean slate policy. Um, having taught in lots of different secondary schools and taught in large secondary schools, one thing I found that it's often possible, especially in larger secondary schools, for students to sometimes get missed. Now, when I talk about students being missed, I'm talking about students who attend every day, who are on time for all the lessons, who always do what's asked of them, but maybe they're not absolutely brilliant and shining and, and top of the class all the time. And on the flip side, maybe they don't get additional support because maybe their behaviour isn't what it should be. They, they come and do what's expected of them every day, all the time, and sometimes can get overlooked, which I never think is fair. So uh, three schools back, I developed a clean slate system. And what it is, is if you attend every day, if you're on time for all your lessons, and if you do what's, what's expected of you, as in you have no debits at the end of the week, you're awarded five clean slate credits. So over the course of an academic year, this can build up to nearly 200 credit points. But more importantly, the tutors are given a list of who has a clean slate every week. And what we ask the tutors to do is make sure they have a conversation with every student that's on that list to say to them, well done, You've done what we expected, you've got clean slate points, keep going and keep doing that. So an adult in the school will always recognise them each week they get a clean slate, so nobody gets missed. And I think that's a, an important thing. Young people often ask, will I find my way about the place? Will I get lost? Uh, and the answer to that is, it's very unlikely. We only have two buildings. Uh, the buildings, we have very straight corridors. There's not nooks and crannies and lots of buildings to get to know. By the end of your first week, you will know your way about, you'll know your timetable and you'll know where to go. And even if you don't, our staff and our students will be more than happy to help. I know that already from when we have students join us at the present. Another thing that young people worry about is friendships. Will I make friends? So I can point to towards our year 10 students. Now remember at the moment, students join us at year 10 at 14 and they have the same worry, even though they're older students. Will I make friends? And I have to say, after a few weeks, one half term of these students not knowing each other, after a half term, you'd think this year 10 group had been together for four years. You will make friends. The key is not necessarily the number of friends, it's making the right quality friends, but you will make friends. Groupings, this is maybe more for the parents. Um, we are looking at whether we have setting by ability. Some subjects will be taught in mixed ability groups. Um, that decision will be made by those subject leaders it will be based on what they think is the best way of teaching your uh, teaching your young people. What will be more important than necessarily an ability grouping will be the targets that we set for our students. So knowing what ability level our students come in at, setting targets for them uh, with our ambitions for how well we want them to do when they leave us in year 11. And it will always be about ensuring every student 
meets the potential, is the best version of themselves, and tries to get their target grade. So that's that's our, going to be our main focus of how we teach. Support, of course, if students have any additional needs or have anything at, at present that they need, it's all about communication. Let us know what those additional needs are. We will, we'll of course, share that information with the primary schools that students are currently at to ensure that the right support is in place for our students, whatever their needs might be. In terms of communication, one thing that does happen, one of the big changes between secondary and primary school is maybe you lose a little bit of that personal contact at the school gate. Maybe you lose a bit of that contact with one teacher that the students have all the time because they'll have lots of different teachers teaching lots of different subjects. So one thing I'm keen to do is make sure that communication still goes on. You as parents will have access to the student's um, information system. So the register, so you know if they're there in lessons, on time, what the timetable is. But in addition to that, if they've received debits and credits, you'll be able to access that information. And on top of that, what we talk to do is have our curriculum in place. So you know on a week to week basis what the students are learning in their subjects. So you can have those communication, have those conversations at home. Our staff will be available for a contact at any point in time. And um, we're not going to wait for parents evenings or wait for reports to find out information. If you have a query, we would want to answer that as soon as possible. And finally, on dress code and kit, uh, another thing I'm very passionate about is the fact that uniforms should be easily available and affordable to families. So to that end, where we won't have a specialist uniform that will only be available in one uniform shop or only be available from us because it's a very bespoke uniform, it will be a uniform that will be available in any shop, any supermarket, in any place to get. It will be very easy to buy and to maintain. We will have a tie. Will be a very snazzy and stylish tie and we will have a blazer badge and um, that will be iron on for, for the blazer but beyond that it will be a, a, an accessible uniform to purchase and the same goes for PE kit again uh, I don't think it should be logoed up in a specific PE kit but it'll be a kit that you can buy in a, in a whole range of outlets and it will be affordable so to try and answer that question there the million dollar question if you like why should I send my child to the Watford Academy and UTC? So let me try and try and answer that as best I can. So what we're going to offer in summary will be a small school, will always be a small secondary school. That would change. The year group will be 90 students maximum. And even when we're full, it will be 600 students maximum. It's about students developing their full potential. One thing we say to our current students uh, all the time is we want them to be the best version of themselves. And that's what we want. Whatever the background, whatever ability level they come in at, we want them to make them the best version of themselves and add that value through their journey uh, with us in secondary school. A strong academic and vocational focus, using the best of what we offer at the moment, but always ensuring English and maths lessons are in place. They'll always be the key lessons because to secure the basics and to get a foundation of understanding of a whole range of subjects, we know that English and maths are absolutely key and underpin um, successful students and how they get on to the next stage in life. As we said earlier about presentation skills, developing those oracy skills of every child and having that in a speaking curriculum, developing their confidence, developing their ability to present, developing their ability to debate and put an argument forward. That will be ongoing throughout our curriculum and in our subjects. Well-being, developing resilience so students can cope with what the world throws at them will be absolutely key. And when we talk about well-being, it's about physical well-being and mental well-being as well, is, is developing those well-rounded individuals that can cope with life. Not, not just having the paper qualifications, but having that additionality as well. And using our existing technologies, using our existing specialisms and making that available to our younger students as well. It's about having access to IT access to computer qualifications, access to robotics as well and developing the expertise in that. Not just about that, we're not just going to be a school for people that are interested in computing, but it's going to be a key part of developing digital skills for all the young people that join us. And we will have great teachers who are very good at what they do and go that extra mile for each child. They already are, even though we've been teaching 14 to 19 year olds, they are already, many of them experienced in secondary education and have lots of experience already teaching key stage three and are looking forward to that challenge of having your sevens back in the Watford Academy and UTC.
So the next steps for you, if you're interested in joining us, if you have any questions following this presentation, please use that email address that you can see on screen now, faq at watchfordutc.org. We'll aim to answer those questions as soon as possible and as detailed as possible, but no, no question is a silly question. Please use that to, to ask any questions you may have. In terms of applications, um, we are accepting late applications. We are aware the deadline for Hertfordshire applications is the 31st October. But for this year, and this year only, you're able to apply separately to Watford UTC. Um, you can do that via our website using the web address you can see there, watfordutc.org forward slash year seven. There's a special year seven link page from the homepage of our website, and you can apply online there. You are still applying to Hertfordshire. And for this year only, as our first year of opening, what you're able to do as a parent is you can apply directly to Hertfordshire and have four secondary schools of choice. Because we're an additional choice, you apply to us separately. So essentially you can have five choices of, of school to apply for this year. If you apply to work for UTC, and if there are fewer than 90 places available, you will be offered a place at Watford Academy in UTC, and you'll be offered a place from your four applications that you made through Hertfordshire. So you'll be given two allocations in March, one via your Hertfordshire application, and if you apply to work for UTC, then you'll have a, an offer of a place with us as well. Your decision then in March is whether you want to take up your one of your four allocated schools or whether you want to take up your application to work for UTC. So it's a win-win scenario this year for one year only. And my final message is to the young people that might be watching this presentation that are currently in year six. This year, you've got the one and only chance to be pioneers. You are going to be the first year seven students to join Watford Academy in UTC, and you're going to be the only year group that can say we were the first students to join Watford UTC year seven. So as I said, you've got a chance to be pioneers and make history. So we look forward to receiving your application. Um, any questions, as I said, please use our FAQ um, email address, and we hope to see you soon at Watford Academy and UTC. Thank you.